Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and I hope you all had a great Easter or Passover weekend, whichever holiday you happen to be celebrating. We had a great one quarantining here at home, made a nice quiche for uh, Sunday brunch, had like a quiche Lorraine with a hash brown crust. Absolutely amazing. For dinner, we did full Indian with butter chicken, homemade garlic naan, cub cucumber raita, and some alu gobi, which if you've never had, it's delicious. It's like a roast uh, Indian side dish. It's potatoes, cauliflower, and then it's kind of uh, tossed all together with like onions and beautiful aromatic uh, Indian spices and er cilantro and turmeric and all that stuff. Just absolutely amazing uh, dinner. I've never gone Indian before for uh, Easter dinner, but we did it yesterday and it was great. Um, so yeah, to get for fired into what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be talking about some Intel news. That's right. We have leaked pricing for the upcoming Comet Lake CPUs, which are currently rumored to be releasing at the end of April. And also I've got some details for you on another free game, which you'll be able to grab starting tomorrow. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen. And all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first up, let's talk about those leaked Intel prices on the upcoming 10 series or Comet Lake uh, CPUs, which as I said at the start, are rumored to be releasing at the end of the month. We'll just have to wait and see on when these processors become available and what Intel is doing with their pricing to try and remain competitive with Ryzen, who has been uh, forcing them to definitely lower some of their prices in the server space um, with Epic CPUs you know, having such high core count. Uh, Intel started lowering prices of Xeon, and now we're probably going to see some of that here as well with the uh, upcoming Comet Lake CPUs. As reported over on Guru 3D, these prices were uh, originally uh, leaked over on a Canadian Canadian e-tailer by the name of Direct Dial. So the prices are in Canadian and then converted over to American. So the prices might fluctuate uh, a little bit here. So starting off, we have the Intel i9-10900. Not sure why they didn't list the, if it's not a K variant. Um, if we look at it here, yeah, it actually doesn't list the K. So that could maybe be an error or maybe there's going to be a non-K and a K variant, which is a possibility as there is a 700K and a 10700 series uh, CPU here so we might see the top end skew actually being a little bit more than what's being delisted that was being listed so far over on direct dial uh, but we could see here that the i9 10900 which is going to be the 10 core 20 thread cpu with a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of 5.2 gigahertz is 679 canadian dollars which works out to 489 us dollars which could possibly be rounded up here in the states to 499 but as i said the 10900k is not listed here in the listings so we might see an overclockable k model which might end up being up around the 550 dollars mark which would put it in line with the pricing that we saw on the 9900k when that was released we also have the 10700k here listed at 419 us dollars or 585 canadian that's got a 3.8 gigahertz base and a 5.1 gigahertz boost which if you're looking at those frequencies with the 3.8 being so much higher than the 10 at 900, it would make sense that this is a non-overclockable i9-10900 model, and there will very likely be a more expensive K variant that's overclockable, and will have a base clock probably somewhere up more around this 3.8, maybe even 3.9 or 4 gigahertz on that top end SKU. And then to round out the list, we have the i7-10700, which again, that would be non-overclockable, and that's going to be $364, and that's also got a lower base frequency and boosts up to 4.8. The interesting worth noting here is that the i7 is finally getting hyper threading uh, returned to those SKUs on the uh, i on the recent um, 9000 series. That was not the case as the 9700K was eight cores, eight threads. So now with the top end SKU being 10 cores, 20 threads, they're able to segment it down and have an eight core, 16 thread processor here with the i7, or with both variants of the i7, and then i5 is probably going to be 6 cores, 12 threads, which is going to be pretty nice for the i5 series if those prices come in around 250 to the $300 range is what you could probably expect based on the pricing here if everything holds up to be true. Now, 
Obviously, we want to talk about the pricing here. And remember, the K variant for the 10900 is not listed here. That's probably going to be about 550, so 10 cores, 12 threads. Now, it's going to be tough for them to remain competitive with AMD still, even though Intel is probably going to be faster per core. They can overclock further and all of that, but they're still getting beat on core counts and they're getting beat on price right now, even with the 3000 series. And when it comes to IPC on Comet Lake, we're probably not going to see that huge of gains as we're still on 14 nanometer with Intel, 14 nanometer plus, plus, plus. And we already talked about the insanely high TDP and temperatures that were rumored for these processors in a recent video. But looking over on Amazon, I mean, you could see that the Ryzen 9 3900X is $434, and that originally came out at $500, and that's 12 cores, 24 threads, versus the 10900, is, which is not even overclockable, probably, is more than the $434 3900X, and we're also expected to see more Ryzen CPUs coming out by the end of the year. So Intel might be first out the gate this year with their processor release, but their prices are still going to get absolutely obliterated for what AMD has on the market right now with the, cur the current Ryzen 9 3900X. They've also got the 3950X, which is more than what Intel is offering, but that's also a 16 core 32 thread monster, which Intel has nothing to compete with on the consumer level, only with really high end stuff. So yeah, I think based on this pricing, it's going to be def very difficult for Intel to kind of sway people over to their side where there's already so many people that are uh, into Ryzen and AMD at like, uh, like, a, like a fan level. I don't want to say fanboy, but a lot of people support what AMD is doing because they view Intel kind of as like the bad guys. AMD are like good guy AMD. I just feel like that's kind of the perception uh, in the marketplace, at least for people that are in the know and follow tech type people that watch my videos um, and other tech channels out there that are kind of in the know on stuff. I feel like that's kind of where people view them as like AMD is good guy AMD and then like Intel and NVIDIA are like these big, huge evil corporations and AMD is the little guy kind of trying to fight back and compete uh, in those high-end spaces and saving people money and being giving the better price uh, to performance option, which Intel has been, uh, you know, just beating them on performance for years. And in a lot of ways, they still beat them on performance, but it's on a per core level. AMD is just offering so much more cores and at a much better value with the CPUs they have out right now. I don't think Intel's are going to be that much better than the 9000 series. It's really just throwing a couple of extra cores at the problem, but still getting nowhere near close to what AMD has on the market with their 12 core and 16 core mainstream CPUs. Moving on from Intel news, I did briefly want to just bring up a free game which is going to be available starting tomorrow. That is Assassin's Creed Two. It's going to be available starting on April 14th for free on the PC. All you need to do to get it is to have Uplay installed on your PC and presumably have a Ubisoft or Uplay account as well, you know, connected with that. And you'll be able to get Assassin's Creed 2 completely free. Again, that's starting tomorrow, April 14th, presumably for a limited time, but I didn't see when it ends. It's if it, if it does end, it's probably this weekend. Um, and unfortunately, we have not gotten a remaster yet on Assassin's Creed 2, at least for the PC. There was the Ezio collection released on the current generation of consoles, but PC never got that, unfortunately. I would still love to see a full remaster on PC of the Ezio collection, as it is a trilogy. Assassin's Creed 2 is uh, sort of the beginning of that. I know there's, if you're not familiar with the older games, Assassin's Creed 1 was like its own storyline, and then Assassin's Creed 2 was like the start of a new trilogy with this character Ezio, and the other two games in that are Brotherhood and Revelations, which Ubisoft is also saying that um, during this time, while Assassin's Creed 2 is completely free, they're going to be also giving people discount codes for Brotherhood and Revelations along with the free copy of Assassin's Creed 2. So that's uh, good to see. There's a lot of mods out there for these games, some complete overhaul mods like Cry Nation, the one I've been showing you gameplay video of. Uh, right now. So you can definitely mod these games to make them look better than they did when they originally came out as the game is about almost 11 years old coming this November. So it's been out for quite a while. As you can imagine, the graphics are pretty dated, but there's tons of mods for these games, as I said, so you can definitely improve on those visuals a bit, but really nothing that a full-on remaster could do if we got something uh, similar to like recent remasters with the Resident Evil games or like the Modern Warfare remaster or the Modern Warfare 2 remaster. If they do something like that with the Assassin's Creed franchise, I think it would be fantastic. It would sell gangbusters. Um, and honestly, yeah, I would love to see the Ezio Collection get that sort of treatment because that was my favorite uh, three-game series in the entire franchise, and I feel like that's probably the case um, for most people. But let me know down in the comments below what your favorite Assassin's Creed 2 uh, game was. I played this 
on our Assassin's Creed game, I should say, not Assassin's Creed 2 game. Um, I played this game on the Xbox 360, so I've never owned it on PC, so I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, grab this free copy tomorrow, mod it, and then, you know, see how it is and see if it holds up today. Maybe we can uh, do a video on that. So let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see, if, you know, the graphics hold up and if it's worth you, uh, you know, maybe wasting some of your data cap for the month and downloading uh, Assassin's Creed 2 on your PC, although I don't expect the file size to be that big as the game is over 10 years old. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your week. I'll be seeing you obviously throughout the week with some more uh, tailored tech news and PC gaming content. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I will see you all tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.